everyone, and welcome to my latest Star Wars book review, uploaded without any audio issues. At least I hope so. I am deeply sorry for what happened with my Splinter of the Mind's Eye review. I was very upset that it uploaded with the choppy audio and everything. And um, I hate that that happened, but I think the problem's been fixed, and it shouldn't happen to any more of my Star Wars reviews or this video or any of my other videos that get posted. And if it does happen, I will be very upset. But, um, yeah, so let's move right along. I've, I reviewed the first, well, not the first five, but five of the X-Wing books last year. Uh, the ones specifically written by Michael Stackpole. But now I want to close out the series and review the five books written by Aaron Alston. Aaron Alston, who uh, is a, uh, not only a Star Wars author, but he was also somebody that uh, took part in writing for role-playing games as well. Uh, unfortunately, he passed away a few years ago. I wasn't aware of this until I actually got ready to make this video. Uh, it turns out he actually passed away. So I guess you could consider this video like a tribute to him. Uh, this is the first time I've reviewed, uh, done one of my book reviews where the author is no longer with us. So um, uh, consider this video a tribute to him and as a thank you for what he gave us as uh, as an author to Star Wars. And Actually, I think he gave us some pretty cool stuff. I think some of the creations that came out of his X-Wing books were pretty cool. and uh, We got some very interesting stories out of it. Um, starting off, uh, like I said, he wrote five books, which I have all here. Five books in the X-Wing series. We're going to start off with these three specifically because uh, they all follow kind of a um, their own running storyline. And they also take place at around the same time as the initial Rogue Squadron books. So around the, you know, right after Return of the Jedi, but before the Thrawn trilogy, so it's still in that window there. And uh, these three books that fit into that portion of the timeline are Wraith Squadron, which introduces us to the Wraith Squadron, obviously. Um, Iron Fist. And Solo Command, which I bet you can guess who's in that book. But... Uh, those three books introduce us to the Wraith Squadron and give us the adventures of that group. And I love the concept of the Wraith Squadron. I think it's great. Uh, when I reviewed Michael Stackpole's books last year, uh, I made the comment that it kind of reminded me of Top Gun, where he's like, he's getting the best of the best of the best for uh, X-Wing pilots. And uh, they are, these are like the best pilots in the galaxy. And here in Wraith Squadron, he's going the opposite route, where Wedge wants to put together a group that has different skills outside of piloting. Piloting is a secondary trait that these guys have, and these are like the cast-off, forgotten sons, the misfit toys uh, that are rejected for one reason or another, but he wants to gather them all together in this group because he needs them for espionage or, um, you know, acts of theft, shall we say, uh, which come up in, in a couple of the books, and a few other kind of more, you know, unsavory things, shall we say. And, you know, where the the Stackpole books feel a lot like they have a Top Gun quality to it. Uh, the Wraith Squadron in these books kind of have a Dirty Dozen feel to it. It feels kind of cool. And some of the characters they come up with are kind of neat. Uh, we've got Face, who's kind of the lead, uh, the unofficial lead of uh, the Wraith Squadron, the main character of the books. And it turns out he was like an old Imperial actor and entertainer, and now he's joined up with the, the Rebellion and the Republic, and he's actually like a master of disguise. Uh, because he's such a great actor. Uh, my, you know, you've got Runt, you've got a few other characters that with their own like tragic backgrounds. My personal favorite is Piggy, who's a Gamorrean. The idea of a Gamorrean that's sided with the Republic and, and the Rebellion or whatever, and he pilots X-Wings, that is hilarious to me that you've got this green pig that flies around in an X-Wing. And the fact that they gave him the nickname Piggy is even funnier. Uh, but he's actually great, and he actually um, turns into one of the major characters in the whole thing. We also have the character, and make sure I've got her name right. Um, she's introduced to us as an Imperial, uh, Gara Pedithel? Pedithel? And she ultimately joins Wraith Squadron um, as like a, you know, a double spy, or a double agent, I should say. And she joins in under the name of, what was the name she, they gave her? Do, 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 do. Laura Notzel. Yeah, Laura Notzel. And so that's her assumed name under Wraith Squadron. And so a lot of the drama through the three books is like, all right, are they going to find out? How are they going to find out what's going to happen when they find out? Is she going to redeem herself? Is she going to like join up with the Wraith Squadron legitimately and join their side? 
Uh, so she's got a very interesting character arc going there as well, especially when it turns out she had a hand in um, uh, causing some tragedies for certain characters within Ray Squadron. So she's, uh, she's got blood on her hands, shall we say. Uh, so she's very interesting to follow. Again, I like Face, I like Piggy, and I just love the whole concept of Ray Squadron. It shows, like, again, how good of a leader Wedge is, that he's uh, very innovative and comes up with stuff like this. And got to respect a guy that does that. So uh, we get the first book, which largely just introduces us to the Ray Squadron, gives us their, their first adventures, their first missions, as they uh, do battle with Admiral Triggett who's kind of an underling of Warlord Zinge. Uh, Warlord Zinge is kind of the main villain of these three novels. Uh, for those of you who remember, Warlord Zinge was the main villain of The Courtship of Princess Leia. Has shown up a couple of other times. Um, unfortunately, I don't think he's the most interesting villain. <laughs> um, I think uh, the Stackpole books benefited from creating Isard, who, again, is not necessarily one of my favorite villains, but she's a lot more interesting than Warlord Zinge is. Uh, Zinge is just kind of a generic... I'm the military guy in charge type of villain and not really doesn't have like a lot of like doesn't have a very interesting personality compared to say Thrawn or somebody like that. Unfortunately, all Imperial military leaders get compared to Thrawn in these books and most of that, all of them don't just don't measure up. But uh, in any case, we get uh, their first adventures here. Uh, then in Iron Fist, this dude tells the accounts of them actually stealing TIE Interceptors and using them as, like, for piracy and various other things against the Imperials, which is kind of hilarious. That concept is great. It's like, oh, let's steal their TIE Fighters and use those against them. So they call it X-Wing. I guess they should call it TIE Fighter instead. It's like start a TIE Fighter series with the Ray Squadron. Um, so that's a really fun story. And in this one, uh, the Ray Squadron do battle with Warlord Singe with Han Solo as their commander, which... Um, again, solid book. I think all three books are really entertaining and solid. Unfortunately, I think Han Solo's presence in the third book and him as, like, leading the mission or whatever kind of takes away from the Ray Squadron a little bit because I felt like in the first two books they built up some good chemistry and there were some good storylines going on with them uh, and, you know, discovering if, if they were going to find out there was a traitor in their mix and Piggy being funny and uh, Face being the leader. You didn't really need Han Solo there and putting him there just kind of serves more as a distraction. So, um, not, I mean, I guess it's always good to see Han, but in this case, it's kind of, yeah, you didn't really need to put him in there. But overall, I think as far as fitting into the timeline uh, that I described, you know, between Return of the Jedi and the Thrawn trilogy, I think these books uh, do really well, create some fun characters, um, fun stories, and they, again, Aaron Alston kind of brought his own flavor to uh, the concept of, the X-Wing pilots, I guess you could say. Uh, I thought he really thought outside the box a little bit. These don't feel like um, he's just kind of aping off of what Michael St Stackpole did, although he does build off of them a little bit. Um, I really feel like he had like a really interesting concept here with the Ray Squadron. They, you know, they don't always get the love that Rogue Squadron gets. I feel like Rogue Squadron gets brought up a lot more. It's like, oh, let's give the Wraiths some love. I, I kind of like the Wraiths myself. Um, I kind of like, I guess, uh, it's really weird. I think as far as the stories go, I think I prefer the Stackpole books. But I think I like the characters a little bit more in Ray Squadron. Because, again, they're a little bit more unsavory, a little bit more dirty. Um, not as polished, you know, not focused on being the best. They're more focused on just getting the job done and, and various other things. So... A uh, very enjoyable trio of books there, but uh, Aaron Alston did not restrict himself strictly to the Race Squadron. He would actually write a Rogue Squadron story as well with Starfighters of, um, let me repeat that, Starfighters of Adumar. And I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right, but uh, this might be my favorite book that he wrote. Where in this one, uh, this one takes place close to the end of the Republic imperial conflict which the end of which was detailed in the hand of thrawn duology uh so we're getting close to that point and here um it's discovered that there was a planet that was inhabited by uh people of the old republic and was left in isolation and left completely alone so the empire kind of left it alone the republic didn't know about it until just now and both forces are now converging on this planet to try and get them to join their side so, uh, and it turns out that this is a society that is enamored by piloting and flying starships. So, 
bring in the X-Wing fighters and bring in the TIE fighter pilots because, you know, it's uh, they're going to try and impress them with their starships and their one-man fighters and everything. And it's up to Wedge and a few of the other key players in Rogue Squadron to uh, kind of win them over and serve as diplomats, which is a very different role from what you would expect from X-Wing pilots. But since this society does value... Um, uh, high flying, uh, you know, piloting and all all that fancy stuff. Since they respect that, it makes sense that Wedge would be the guy that would go there and be the diplomat. So I, I think there's a you know, very different role for Edge and very interesting concept and very cool. And it was very nice to see like both sides kind of like at least at first trying to be diplomatic about it and trying to um, win Adumar over to their side. It's very Star Trek like in a way if you think about it, where the discussion kind of comes before the fighting. Ultimately, it does end up in a fight with. Um, Adumar siding with the Republic and, and both forces combining to uh, fend off an Imperial invasion at the end of the book. But um, uh, I, again, I like the more like political aspect to it. it. It made for a very interesting read. And actually one aspect that I thought was very interesting where it turns out the planet Adumar does not have a unified world government. They have smaller governments all over the planet, which I guess is more realistic because uh, you think of planet Earth. We're not a world government. We have... Um, world entities we have international entities but we don't have a unified world government we all have a bunch of different nation states that run it however they see fit and adumar is set up the same way it's like it makes you think it's like man none of the other star wars planets are done that way because it's like they all have one topographical feature and they all have one government it's uh very interesting uh so to kind of like do something really different uh with that like even you know something like star trek all it feels like every planet it's like Everybody on that planet acts the same way and they're governed the exact same way. Uh, there's no, like, split. Not a lot of, like, different split governments uh, in most science fiction shows like Star Trek or, or Star Wars. But we get that here, and I thought that was a very nice touch and added an extra layer of confusion to the whole proceeding. So, um, yeah, Starfighters of Adamar I thought was a really, really good book. I really enjoyed it, and uh, I think it's my personal favorite one that Aaron Elston wrote. And then the final one that he wrote is, has a very interesting place in the timeline. This one is called Mercy Kill. And uh, it's, once again, he's back to writing for the Wraith Squadron. We get uh, the return of the Wraith Squadron. And this book is set after the events of the Yuuzhan Vong War. So after the New Jedi Order series, this is actually the latest point in the timeline that I've ever reviewed. Uh, this one's called Mercy Kill, and it focuses on my boy Piggy uh, as really the main character where he has to deal with the guilt and shame over um, a mercy killing that happened uh, during the Yuuzhan Vong conflict and led to him leaving uh, Ray Squadron and uh, Face ultimately comes back and brings Piggy back into the fold and reforms Wraith Squadron to help uncover a conspiracy uh, to overthrow the leadership of both the Republic and the Imperial Remnant who are now allies at this point. So um, again, it's right back to the rates just having fun again, you know, espionage and uh, uncovering conspiracies and all that other fun stuff. So, and Piggy being the center of it made me happy because I like Piggy. It's not necessarily um, one of the better books, um, but it, it is the mystery behind what's going on, I think, is very interesting. And again, the characters of Face and Piggy are really fun. And it's just nice to have one last adventure with the Raid Squadron. Uh, Aaron Olsen's greatest contribution to the Star Wars books that he wrote. So, um, overall, I mean, I, that pretty much concludes the X-Wing series. Um, and I think, overall, like, all ten books are really solid reads for the most part. I think, uh, again, if you had to twist my arm, I would probably say I'd prefer Stackpole's books over Aaron Alston's books. But I think that these are all really solid reads as well. And, again, they kind of... They capture the same thing the Stackpole books do in that they're, like, fun adventures that get away from the monotony of always having Jedi involved, because that's one thing that uh, Star Wars has kind of struggled with, especially after the prequels came out, where it's just like, it's just Jedi, everything. It's Jedi, 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 Jedi. And I'm like, eh, there's you don't always have to have lightsabers or force users and every single thing. And the X-Wing books, for those of you who kind of like had your fill of Jedi, I think all 10 X-Wing books are worth your time uh, to kind of give you something a little different and kind of get you in the... Actually, um, they kind of feel like some of the old Star Wars video games. Like, I guess you could throw Battlefront in there. Uh, I immediately think of Rogue Squadron on N64. Like, it's 
it's about like those missions and those uh, the people that don't always get the credit. And um, it's one of the reasons I like Rogue One, uh, the movie. I think it's the best movie that Disney's done since Star Wars has come back uh, under their wing. So um, yeah, I think these X-wing books they fill a very interesting void. Um, not just in the expanded universe, but in Star Wars media in general, where it's like, it's proof that you don't have to rely on the Force, you don't have to rely on the Jedi to always tell good Star Wars stories. You can just have, like, a really wacky band of characters going off on adventures. And that's pretty much what the X-Wing books do. Um, and I think they do it fairly well. And I think both Michael Stackpole and Aaron Alston did a really good job uh, creating some very interesting characters and some interesting stories uh, to facilitate um, all of those things. So... Uh, yeah, that concludes the, my latest Star Wars book review. Thank you all for watching. I was a little quick on this one, but uh, yeah, uh, you know, these books are just, that's kind of what these books are. They're kind of like really fast, fun reads. They're not like the most uh, complicated things in the world. They're just really fun adventure books. And I think um, all of the X-Wing books are that way. So highly recommend them. Um, I think they're a lot of fun. If you're looking something, if you're looking for something different, fun and kind of fast paced and easy i i think you the x-wing books will be right up your alley i i recommend all 10 of them uh to some degree uh some are better than others obviously but uh, i think the really good ones are really really good so uh some top notch uh, top notch stuff here so that concludes my latest star wars book review thank you all for watching and i'll have another one for you next month so don't go away i'll have plenty more material for you and again i will have that material for you without any audio issues I promise, but uh, I'm all done here. That's it. We're done. So take care, everyone, and I will see you all later.